Ask the Eba what they suffered from these feminist warriors. For those who dare insult them by saying you are nothing but a man, the punishment is death. As for me, I would loathe to be in the same room with one of them. I prepare modern feminists. Lugard from day one was focused on having a great legacy as a builder of British imperialism and wrote flowery books about his contributions. A tropical mandate in 1905 and dual mandate in British tropical Africa after retirement in 1922. Formation draws attention to the numerous flowery articles written to support his career by Flora Shaw, girlfriend to George Goldie, who the British state gave a royal warrant to exploit the resources of the country. Goldie was a philanderer and Flora was one of his numerous side chicks. After Goldie's wife died, Flora waited for a proposal from her boyfriend which never came. Desperate, she broke with convention and wrote him a letter asking that he marries her. He had been paid by the British state for the Niger Company. He refused and went to China to enjoy his wealth, and she went into depression. Fred Lugard, on the other hand, as a young man, fell madly in love with the wife of his officer in India, but after some time, she became realistic and spawned him. He developed a serious trauma and decided to come to the Niger area and die fighting for the glory of British imperial possessions. Having failed in their love lives, these two married in their late 40s. Flora was six years older than Fred, and for more gossip on these characters, read the book. Lugard's career was one of brutality. Even the British colonial office found his excesses unbearable. After the massacre at Satiru, Sokoto in 1906, he was ordered out of Nigeria because he could not be trusted not to be a repeat offender. It was when the British state decided to amalgamate the northern and the southern protectorates that they decided they needed a brutal administrator to deal with the aftermath, so they brought Fred back in 1912. Flora refused to follow him, so he brought his junior brother Ned as his personal assistant. It's called nepotism. It was Ned Lugard who invented the term trousered natives as an insult against the educated Lagos elite who were criticizing the administration of his senior brother J.D. Davis of the Times of Nigeria responded to these ineffective by calling Fred a necropobist as the word racist could not be used in the press. Considered as libel, Lugard was angry and got the court to charge him £100 for insulting Oga. He had a huge fight with the Lagos press. Kitoye Ajasa, pioneer. George Williams, large standard. John Payne, Lagos Weekly Record. Lugard's greatest enemy was, however, Herbert Macaulay, Bishop Crowther's grandson, a land surveyor in the colonial service. For criticizing Lugard, he was framed for corruption sacked and jailed with Lugard calling him ex-convict. He took it as a badge of honor, laughing at the idea of conviction for criticizing colonialism. Lugard, the murderer, was a repeat offender with the Enemo massacre of 1914 with 60 people killed and the 1918 Nadubi incident where Lugard organized the killing of over 600 Eba protesters. He was immediately retired from service after the incident. To close the chapter on Lugard, Port Harcourt should reflect on why their city was named after Lord Lewis Harcourt, the man who agreed to re-employ Lugard after his first disgrace. Harcourt was a sexual predator who committed suicide after the revelation that he had raped a 12-year-old boy. The very last paragraph of the book closes on an interesting reflection. The 120 years of history traced in the book from the jihad to amalgamation draw attention to one key characteristic. The Nigerian state has consistently resorted to violence and military force to address political differences. This is still the situation today. Clearly, the time has come for us to learn to negotiate to resolve our differences. I strongly recommend reading this book to all Nigerians.